up until about, I would say, 10 or 15 years ago, it was thought that sleep disturbance was just an outcome of dementia. <clears throat> just like many disruptions you get with dementia, if you're, enough of your brain gets degenerated, you start seeing deficits in sleep. But more and more over the last decade or so, we've seen evidence to indicate that sleep actively participates in the early stages of uh, Alzheimer's disease pathogenesis. One of the first things to demonstrate this is to show that if you took um, rodents that are expressing amyloid proteins and you sleep deprive them, you can actually increase the burden of plaques in the brain. This has then been followed up by a lot of other work. Um, that same group um, in WashU has shown that if you sleep deprive these rodents, you can actually facilitate tau pathology to spread through the brain. Um, there are also studies done in humans showing that if you suppress certain um, brain waves in sleep, you can actually increase the cerebrospinal fluid levels of amyloid in humans. Um, and you know that's sort of a transient um, uh, study, but there's been a lot of studies um, through a variety of um, groups around the world, including our own, that show that different brain waves and different features of sleep actively correlate with the burden of pathology in the brain. And so there's this thought now that um, as the pathology builds up in its earliest stages, it disrupts sleep. But in addition, with more sleep disruption comes a facilitation of, of increased production of these pathologies. The other side of that is that there's this system called the lymphatic system, which is thought to clear waste from the brain. Uh, and this is primarily activated during deep non-REM sleep. And when um, this process gets disrupted, you, you can actually impact the ability of the brain to clear these AD pathologies. So with sleep disruption, you can have um, increased production of amyloid pathology, increased production of tau pathology, decreased clearance of these pathologies, and you can start to accumulate them and theoretically build the plaques and tangles, which then can build up and spread through the brain and trigger neurogeneration. In addition to that, um, there's been a lot of evidence showing that sleep disorders like sleep apnea and insomnia increase risk epidemiologically for the uh, development of Alzheimer's disease. But one thing that still kind of remains unclear is the exact mechanistic link between these features. And this is something that a lot of studies around the world are trying to get at is why does sleep lead to the increase in pathology? Why does sleep increase risk for Alzheimer's disease? Um, and there's a variety of possibilities. but the evidence is pretty clear now that sleep is a risk factor. Sleep disturbance is a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, but it may not be just Alzheimer's disease. It might be other forms of dementia as well, and that might depend on the type of sleep disturbance you get. 